I love all you guys. It's wonderful being here. Uh, I hope it's not another 20 years before I come back. <laughs> but it's been a blessing. And you may be seated. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible in John. It says, out of your belly flows rivers of water. Well, you guys bless me with about five liters of <laughs> Fiji water. <laughs> so I'm full of water today. <laughs> and I'm honored to be here. What an awesome church you have. If I lived down here, I'd be coming here. I really would. I just, just the spirit of your pastors, the youth. I've never seen youth like this that love the Lord. And, you know, the word of God tells us strive together for the faith of the gospel. We need you. I got drafted in the Army in 1970. There was a big sign that said, had a picture of Uncle Sam. It said, I need you. Well, we're in a war today. We're in a battle today. But the good news is greater is he that's in you and me than he that's in the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The greater one. The love of God that's in you is greater than the hate that's in the world. Hallelujah. I'm just going to go by the Holy Ghost. I gave him some scriptures and stuff. <laughs> he just gave me a John 15, 13. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus Christ. Are you grateful for what he did on the cross? You know, the Word of God tells us in 2 Timothy, it says, be instant in season, out of season. He's talking to a pastor, Timothy. He said, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, right. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us the word of reconciliation. You and I are ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Because the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. I'm not religious. I hate religion. They lied to me. They told me just because they sprinkled me as a little boy, an infant, and I went through confirmation in 1965 I was going to heaven. That's what I was told. When I go to funerals or home-going services, and the ministry gets right up in front there and tells all the people they're saved because they were sprinkled, a couple times in my life, I prayed, Lord, give me an opportunity to talk to him. And he did. <laughs> he did. Praise God. One of my friends, he, uh, I led him to cry. I used to be a mailman. Now I'm a messenger. And we had these machines called the LSM machines, letter sorting machines. And you'd sit down for a half an hour and you'd key a, three digits or whatever. Every second, letters would go through. So if you sat down for half an hour, you're going to key uh, 1,800 letters in a half hour. And then you get up for 15 minutes, come back, do another 1,800. But I led my friend Gary, his name is Gary Rue, he's in heaven today. I led him to the Lord. And uh, he could have been a professional hockey player, but he got hit by a puck in his ankle and he developed gangrene. And he had an artificial leg. But he loved God. <laughs> he came to our church, he had this big white Bible, if you know what I mean, a family Bible, and he was so hungry for God. Every time I'd talk about him, because he had a stroke, they told him he wouldn't live through the night, 
and he lived 13 years. I was right there in his hospital room. They said he ain't going to live through the night. He lived for 13 more years after having a stroke. And he'd be walking like this out there, and he'd be praying for us on the streets. And when I'd ever talk about him, he'd just start crying. How I led him to Christ behind the LSM machine. Then I had the honor to do his memorial service. Another soldier went home. Oh, he loved God, just like you do. And he told people about Jesus wherever he went. The hardest thing about the ministry of evangelism is making yourself available. Just make yourself available. Just show up. And it's wherever you go, to work, Every day, I call it everyday evangelism. Sometimes I have no intention of praying with people to get saved. But God always opens up doors. I'm leaving the hotel today. A maid comes out of the elevator. She speaks Spanish. I said, habla espanol. She goes, sí. I said, uh, mi nombre es Nicolás. Soy pastor de iglesia en el estado de Minnesota. Tiene un minuto, escúchame, por favor. My name is Nick. I'm a pastor from the state of Minnesota. Can I talk to you for a minute? She goes, si, sí, senor. I go, donde eres usted? Where are you from? She goes, Venezuela. I said, cuantos años vive aquí? How many years you lived in Arkansas? Un año, she says, only one year. I say, le gusta? Do you like it? Si, sí, she said. To make a long story short, she got born again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You don't have to go on the streets. I've been in Compton, California. I've been in Harlem, New York. I've been all over the world. To God be the glory. Because he chooses the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. John 15, 16, he says, you haven't chosen me, but I've chosen you. I've ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And your fruit should remain, it says. A lot of naysayers that never do this ministry, what do you do about the follow-up? One time I was in Peru. I'm out in a, a bunkhouse out in the jungle. And there was a pastor from the States there. And we went out, we prayed with over 10,000 people in a week in Peru. And I stayed at his bunkhouse. He comes out and he goes, "Uh, what do you do about the follow-up? And I said, let me ask you a question, pastor. Did you have any follow-up? And he goes, I said, neither did I. One plants, one waters. God gives the increase. We do our part, God will do his part. I never had no follow-up. I just went in my bedroom on August 22nd, 1976. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, like all these six people you sent across my life the last seven years, come in my heart and change my life. I'm tired of being a drunk. Never been the same. The Holy Spirit filled my bedroom. I was a Lutheran. The Spirit of God filled my room. I was so excited. I got up. When I woke up in the morning, I got my big Bible. I read 21 chapters of John the day I accepted Jesus Christ. I got saved on a Sunday. I went to church on, or went to church. I go to church every day. I went to church on Monday, post office, and my friend, Spirit-filled Catholic, I walked up to him and I said, John, I got born again last night. He goes, praise God, Nick. Read the Gospel of John. I said, I did already. (laughs) See, the Lord orders our steps. We don't believe in coincidence. I was sharing with a guy the other day. I said, I went into Sam's Club one day, and my wife said, Nicky, pick up some croissants, would you, at the store? I said, sure. So I get all the stuff, (laughs) all the groceries. I get it to my car, and I'm loading all the stuff in my car, and I go, Got the croissants. So I went back in the store. I went way in the back by the bakery, picked up some croissants. I've been to Liberia. So I'm walking, and I get up to the counter, and this guy's got one of those rotisserie chickens, and he's holding it. It's really hot. I said, sir, just lay it on the conveyor belt. I'm okay. That's all I got is this one product. And he, I said, he said something to me, and I said, hey, are you from Liberia? Yes, I am. I said, I've been to your country, man. What? Oh, yeah. I said, we went over there. We did 
humanitarian aid. We took toothbrushes, toothpaste. We went into all these schools. We gave Gideon Bibles to all the little kids and stuff. We went into Catholic, Seventh-day Advent, Baptist, all these different schools. And it was so awesome. And we were talking about one, you lead someone to Christ once every 33 years. We did a pastor's conference in a place called Painesville. And there's a city in Painesville, Minnesota, 56362 is the zip code over there. But we were over in Painesville, Liberia. Hallelujah. And all these 150 pastors were there. And one of my friends, he just turned 80. He's been with me over 20 years. His name is Jim and his wife, Connie. And they go with me all over the world. He's been in 13 countries with me. And he was a fallen down drunk too before he got saved. Hallelujah. And we went over to Liberia. And he grabbed the mic and he got there, 150 pastors. He said, I have a question. How many of you pastors have led anybody to Jesus Christ the last week? No hands. How many of you led someone to Christ the last month? No hands. How many of you led someone to Jesus Christ the last year? No hands. 150 pastors, not a one of them. We took them all on the streets. A week later, he stood up there. He said, how many of you people led someone to Jesus Christ this week? 150 hands went forward. Up. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. We all can do that. He's anointed you for such a time as this. The Bible said, as he is, so are we in this world. Jesus is the anointed one in his anointing. Yeah. Amen? Amen? See, you're anointed to do this wherever you go. God will open up. If you pray for opportunities, Lord, use me today to give love to somebody, someone that's hurting. There's so many people hurting today. I was in Walmart last night. There's these kids. They went to prom, seven of them. They're all dressed up, really. I go, hey, guys, how you doing? Prom night, huh? Yeah, hey, man, I'm from Minnesota. Can I give you guys some good news? Sure, they said. All seven bowed their head in Walmart and got born again. I said, praise the Lord. They went to prom and got saved. (laughs) Then there's these four kids on skateboards. They got their skateboards. I was with Victor and Amy, and they got their skateboards, and I walked up to them, all four of them. They all prayed in Walmart. People will pray wherever you go. I tell my evangelism people, I say, wherever you go, people will get saved. And I I go see, and I talk to people. I say, hey, Joseph, how'd it go tonight? Well, you said, Pastor, wherever we go, people got saved. (laughs) Call things that be not as though they were. You can say, I'm a soul winner. Say that. Say, I'm a fisher of men. men. Matthew 4, 19, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. All we have to do is follow him. I see someone with a cross, sir, like yours. To get their heart, I walk up to them and say, hey, I really like your cross. Oh, thank you, they say like that. I say, evidently, you must believe in Jesus. You're wearing a cross. Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I go to church every week. Hey, that's awesome, man. Can I just ask you a personal question? I'm a pastor from a church in Minnesota. Most people I see that wear crosses, they believe in the Lord. They believe he died and rose again. But most people that wear crosses, they really don't know they're going to go to heaven when their life ends. They hope or think they will. And I go, sir, do you know for sure? And they go, boy, I hope so. Just because you said something about the cross. I prayed with a girl with pink hair last night, all dreadlocks. Her name was Destiny. After I prayed with her, I said, you have a new destiny. And God will use anybody that makes himself available. I started weeping when I saw those little kids up here on their knees worshiping God. I thought, man, I wish I would have got saved when I was that young. But I grew up in an alcoholic environment. My grandpa died at 52. My dad was a drunk most of his life. And what I hated, I became. But we broke the curse. I drink all I want to. I don't want to drink. I've had relatives say to me, you mean you don't drink any? I said, I drink all I want to, man. What? You're a pastor? Yeah. I don't want to drink. I tell people, yeah, I smoke all the dope I want to. 
What? You're a pastor and you smoke all the dope you want to? Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> See, that dope won't keep him from Jesus. The beer won't keep him from Jesus. Actually, the day I got saved, I'm sitting watching a, a soccer game. At, it was a playoff game in Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Mall of America sits here now. And I'm sitting drinking a beer. And I started thinking about all these people that told me about Jesus. They had an effect in my life, even though I laughed at them. I mocked them. Every time you talk to somebody and they listen to you, Landon, Jesus said in Matthew 10, 40, if they receive Landon, they receive me who sent Landon. And if they reject Landon, they're not rejecting Landon. They're re rejecting him that sent Landon. The Bible said, thanks be unto God, which causes us to triumph. It says we're more than conquerors. Not just a conqueror. More than. Hallelujah. The Bible said we labor not in vain in the Lord. It's not useless to plant seeds. One plants, one waters. God gives the increase. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want you to pray for me right now. Devil's starting to attack my throat again like he did the other day. Hallelujah. He's defeated. He doesn't want Christians to know that God wants to use them. Oh, I sure wish I had boldness like you did, Pastor Nick. Well, you do. <laughs> Ephesians 3.12 says you do. In whom we have boldness and confidence by the faith of him. Proverbs 28 says you do. Huh? The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We have boldness. Proverbs 30, 30. I'll try my new glasses. I had cataract surgery, so I don't need them to drive anymore, but I need them to read. Thank God I wore glasses for over 50 years. And you know, you talk about words being powerful. About 15 years ago, I went to an eye doctor, and he said to me, he said, boy, it looks like you're developing cataracts. I said, really? How long do you think that will? Oh, I, probably 15 years, he said to me. Exactly 15 years I developed cataracts. So I had them removed, prayed with all the surgeons. I shared the other day I had prostate cancer at Mayo Clinic. I prayed with 15 nurses to get saved. What the devil means for bad, you can turn it around. Turn the tables on the devil. No matter what you're going through, you're going through it. I love this psalm. I say that psalm almost every day. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the heaven be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. They looked unto him and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him all of his troubles. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Ha! Ah. Glory to God. I love that chapter. It's one of my favorite chapters in Psalms. 
And then it says, many are the afflictions, verse 19, of the righteous, and the Lord delivers him out of them all. I tell, we go to the malls, so I tell, I use that scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, and the Lord delivers them out of the mall. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! We maul the devil. We have the victory. Say, I got the victory. Say, I'm above only and not beneath. Say, I'm the head and not the tail. Say, I'm anointed minister of the gospel. Say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's a power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Isn't that awesome? You're not ashamed of the gospel. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. A lot of people are afraid to share the Lord with people. But you know, before I was a believer, I wasn't ashamed of what I did for the devil. I didn't even have to tell people. They knew I was serving the devil. But a lot of people don't even know Christians are Christians sometimes. (laughs) Don't shout me down now. Oh yeah, I used to work at the post office after I got saved all these uh, closet Christians came out and started telling me, praise God, I heard you got saved, Nick. I said, where were you when I went to the bar? Ordering a pitcher of beer. Where were you? You're, my, you're a Christian? I didn't know you were a Christian. You sure didn't exemplify it. But we are the light of the world. He said, let your lights shine before men that they'd see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Ephesians 5, 1, Be ye therefore imitators or followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also loved us, gave himself for us. Love is given. Paul said, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, He said, For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The devil says, oh, I, don't, I can't do that to people. He lies to them. Then there's another lie. Oh, there's only 10% of the body of Christ that has the gift of evangelism. People tell me that all the time. I said, oh, really? Let me ask you a question. When Jesus was with his 12 disciples, did he tell them, he say, I know there's only 1.8 of you are supposed to go out into the highways and the byways, and the 10.2 of you are supposed to stay back and pray in the synagogue. No, he told them all to go. He told them all to go. And they went. James chapter 1. Turn there, please. Hallelujah. I'm getting blessed. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 1. Very familiar with most of us. And I do love the word. See, you got to hide the word in your heart. Then you won't sin against them. That's what he said, Psalm 119, 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hallelujah. A whole lot of shaking going on in here. My hand's shaking. I don't know why that is, but my one hand shakes when the anointing comes on me. One day I prayed for an alcoholic. He said, you okay, man? Your hand's shaking. (laughs) I said, yes, sir, I am okay. (laughs) Verse 22, James 1, 22. It says, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself or sees himself and goes his way And immediately, straightway, forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty 
and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. It's a promise, you'll be blessed. But he tells us to continue. Some of you maybe went out on the, you know, outside the four walls for the first time, and that's awesome. Just continue. Don't quit. Ephesians. Now I'm getting back to some of the scriptures I gave them. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Okay. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or manner of life in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We're a three-part being. Flesh and the mind, it says. Amen? And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, made us alive. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. I told my friend one day, I said, you know, a lot of Christians do a lot of squawking. A lot of Christians do a lot of talking. But not a lot of Christians do a lot of walking. And if you look in a concordance, the word walk is almost in there as much as pray. There's action. Jesus was moved with compassion. Compassion's God's love and action. Hallelujah. Romans 10. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire in God and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. You can put your city in there. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish your own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. For Moses, verse 5, isn't it? Romans 10, I've got to turn there for a minute. The Bible tells God restores everything the devil or the canker worm. I heard statistics years ago. Every ounce of alcohol destroys a thousand brain cells. And I thank God he restored my brain. <laughs> Glory to God. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. A lot of people don't like word of faith churches. Well, we're supposed to preach the word of faith, aren't we? It's better than the word of doubt, isn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> then verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness or right standing with God, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I love the next verse. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Oh, glory. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, 
For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. I love the next verse. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things? There's preachers in Minneapolis standing on street corners in front of liquor stores. No drunks can enter the kingdom of God. You love your sin, don't you? Walking down the street, screaming and yelling at people. I shared a testimony I had about five years ago at Cinco de Mayo. We had had 50 people go out witnessing. We prayed with over 800 people in about five hours to get born again. And there was a guy standing with turn or burn, you repent. I walked up to him, I said, hey, you guys having good success today? He goes, oh, you're one of those one, two, three, pray and you're in. I said, well, doesn't the Bible say whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be? You heretic, he says to me. Called me a heretic. I'm walking away, he called me a pervert. I'd never seen the guy, he was a Baptist pastor. And he had a, a video camera around his neck, I didn't know it. I started praying in tongues. He goes, oh, the devil's come out today. Then the next day, I went on Facebook. Here's a picture of me on there. Demon-possessed man hates the preaching of the gospel. That's what he called me, a demon-possessed man. There was another guy in a wheelchair. I said, can I pray? Get out of here, he said. I was going to pray for him. Strolling down the street in a wheel. I said, can I get out of here? Religion, yeah. having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Second right. yes. Timothy chapter 3 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unruly. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that do good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. It's easy to say, my wife, I love you, honey. But when I demonstrate that love, she knows I do just like Jesus did for us. It's really not hard getting saved. Some Christians make it really hard. I, I was sharing, I, I worked at the post office. <laughs> Hallelujah. I worked at the post office. And by my hotel, I noticed there's a United Pentecostal Church, okay? And uh, there was a guy that worked at the post office. He's never one time witnessed to me. And I got baptized in water, and I was so excited about getting baptized. Never witnessed to me, never shared Christ. I didn't know he was a believer. He found out I got baptized. He come up to me, and he said, Will you baptize in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or the name of Jesus only? I said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He goes, you're getting closer, Nick. No wonder people don't want to get saved. Huh? Right, Rodney? <laughs> Hallelujah. All the tongue talkers never witnessed to me. I got born again. They came up to me and he said, have you ever heard of speaking in tongues? I looked at him, I thought, are you a believer? Oh, yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking tongues. You need that gift. Why did he give us that? Acts 1.8 tells you. Yeah, that's what it says. You'll be a witness, it says. You'll receive the Holy Ghost when he comes upon you, and you shall be witness. Shall be, a lot of shall be's in the Bible. Whosoever shall be. Call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. 
I'm not talking about dogs. <laughs> I have so much fun. What a life. I told my wife we watch a wonderful life. I don't know how many times during Christmas. Jimmy Stewart. I said, Jimmy Stewart has nothing over me. But again, if we know what our words, words are powerful. One day a man walked up to me and he said, Pastor Nick, you should write a book. And that was confirmation to me. And I I said, well, it costs a lot of money to write a book. You know, publish it and all that stuff. But he agreed with me. I said, okay. Then one day I was out with a old country buffet, they called it. Now it's called Golden Corral. <laughs> it used to be called Old Country Buffet. And I was sitting with two guys, and I was talking to them. Yeah, I'm going to write a book. One guy gets up, goes out, comes back, sets down a check for 2500 bucks. He said, I want to put this towards your book. Amen. My dad passed away. I got four sisters. That's why I'm so sentimental. I grew up with all girls. My wife says, I've never seen anybody cry like you. (laughs) All my sisters said, all dad's memorial money is going to your book. So they paid for my book. So I started, I give my books away. I wrote it 20 years ago, but it's the same word. But in that book, I'd only been in two countries. Now I've been in 29. Who ever thought? I said one day, one of these days, I'll be preaching the gospel all around the world. And like I said the other night, I never left Minnesota until I went in the army or I went across the border to Wisconsin to drink because I was 18 and they, you could drink at 18. But I never, who ever thought? I drove Reinhard Bonnke around for a week. He laid his hands on me. And I'll never forget the sermon. We didn't even have, we had straw floors at Living Word. We weren't even in our building. And he was preaching after he laid his hands on me. I was out for 45 minutes, but I could hear him. And he was reading John chapter 8 about the woman taken in adultery. First of all, he said, where was the man? They took the woman in adultery, but where was the man? And I'm laying on the floor and I can hear him. And he said, you without sin, cast the first stone. And if you read John 8, it said they were convicted by their own conscience. And they all turned away and walked away. And he said, woman, where are all thine accusers? She said, master, there is none. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go go and sin no more, he said. The only one who condemns us is Satan. No matter what you do for God, you, I picked up a hitchhiker, hitchhiker one time. He just got out of prison, and I'd only been saved a little while. I was going to Lutheran church and stuff. After I let the guy off, he goes, oh, if you would have said this, that guy would have got saved. Just come condemning me. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I love each and every one of you. I'm here to tell you that God wants to use you. And all you have to do is make yourself available to his ability, his authority, his anointing, And he'll use you like never did before. Because he loves you. And you can't, I I love, I thrive on this. It's it's life. It's like the word of God. You grow as you go. I tell people, the more you go, the more you grow. The more you go and the more you grow, the more you flow. The more you go, the more you flow. The more you grow the more you know. Speaking the truth in love that you may grow up into him in all things which is ahead, even Christ. Ephesians chapter 4. He put the fivefold ministry gifts in the body of Christ to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. You were talking about members. I'm getting ready to close here pretty soon. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 12. Are you guys getting anything out of this? Praise God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or worship. 
And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be in many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distrib distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep. That's why you need the body. And you have a part to play. Ephesians 4. I'll just finish reading part of that, what I started. Wow, thank you, God. I love the word. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to verse 11. I'm going to start. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or complete or mature man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love that you may grow up into him in all things which is ahead even Christ from whom the whole body Fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Hallelujah. <laughs> every part. You have a supply. And he wants to unwrap all the gifts. So many hurting people. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, said, Lord, the harvest is ripe. The labors are few. It's still that way. It's got to change. There's so many people, they love God, but they don't know God. They know about him. But they don't know he, he loves them. And how will they know? Unless we tell them. Not with condemnation. John 3, 17 says, For God sent not a son into the world to condemn. The word condemn means judge. But that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned or judged. But he that believeth not is condemned or judged already. We're no better than nobody outside the four walls of this church. The only difference between you and them is Jesus Christ. And they just perish for lack of knowledge. I never knew that. I told these kids last night that went to prom. I said, hey, I was captain of my high school basketball team. I was voted the friendliest kid in my high school, male student as a senior. 
I always got along with people. But I didn't know God loved me. I never heard it from my pastor. They ran him out of town for embezzling $400,000 out of the church. He stood up every week in a robe way above the people. But God loves him too. I wish I could find him. Because religious people crucified Jesus. <laughs> they stirred up the people. People tell me, I don't like religion. I said, either do I. Actually, I hate it, I tell them. What? Yeah, I hate it. They lied to me, I said. I already shared that about it. Oh, well, they told me just because I got sprinkled and got confirmed I was going to heaven. I said, I don't have a religion. I have a relationship. I said, religion spelled D-O. You have to do all of these things in order for God to love you. Relationship is D-O-N-E. Jesus said on the cross, it's finished. <laughs> it's finished. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in you, each and every one of you, than he that's in the world. Wherever you go, people will get saved. How will they know unless you tell them? Boy, I never knew that. I never heard it. People tell me that. All. I've never heard nothing like this before. I said, well, I never did either until God sent six different people like myself. I said that to these four skateboarders last night. They all believed in Jesus. They all believed he died and rose again, but not a one of them knew. But hope, 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 I'd go. Hey, if you could know instead of hope, wouldn't you want to know? Hey, I don't hope or think I'm married. I know I'm married. Just like I know I'm married, I know I'm going to heaven. And it's not by what I did, it's what he did. Hallelujah. I don't know all of you here. In fact, I don't know the majority of you here. But God does. And I'm an evangelist. A lot of people go to church. I've prayed people from, to receive Christ, they go to my church. They go to church, but they're not saved. They sit in the pews, but they're not saved. So I'm going to have a call right now. You can bow your heads if you want to. And then I'd like to lay hands on people just for boldness, if that's okay, Pastor. Anybody here that you don't have that assurance that when your life, you take your last breath, do you know 100%? If you don't know, raise your hand. I want to pray for anybody. Anybody in this place? Hallelujah. I see that hand. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anybody else in this place? You know, the Bible said there's joy in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner that repents. Hallelujah. I don't care. If I came down to Arkansas and we prayed with one person instead of 58 people like we did, I would be rejoicing back to Minnesota. <laughs> so we're going to say a prayer together. What you already believe. And if you mean this prayer with your heart, I believe your life will never be the same. And he which began a good work in you will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. We're confident in this very thing. The Holy Spirit will follow up on people. We do our part. We invite people to come to Bible studies. But they have to take the initiative to come. But we have to take the initiative to go and share the gospel. So I'd like everybody to just pray this. And if you meet it from your heart, you'll have a miracle. Say, say this with me. Heavenly Father, I know I've sinned against you. I ask you to forgive me. I do believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is your son. That he died on the cross in my place. Shed his precious blood for me. In God, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, right now, I open my heart. I invite you to come in. Make yourself real to me. Take control of my life. Keep me from evil. Make me the person you want me to be. 
be my Lord and Savior. And now, Lord, make me a soul winner. Make me a fisher of men. Thank you for your anointing on my life. I purpose for the rest of my days to be instant in season and out of season to preach the word, do the work of an evangelist. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you're here today and you'd like more boldness, pastor gave me permission. I'd like to lay my hands on you. I, I had Reinhard Bonnke, Dwight Thompson, Norval Hayes, R.W. Schambach. Lay hands on me. There's impartations of the Spirit. That's why I came here, to impart unto you some spiritual gift that you may be established. And we give them all the glory. So if you want to stand up, is that okay? We got ushers to help me.
Glory to God. Romans 1.11, where I long to see you that I might impart to you a spiritual gift to strengthen you and establish you. It's what we saw. It's what we experienced. But let me say this. Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, he's, it reads this way. It says that I, I, would, I, I long to see you. I'd like to go on and, and teach you more advanced things. Not having to lay again the elementary teachings. One of them is the laying on of hands. In other words, this is the, one of the most basic things that you and I could ever understand is the significance of impartation through laying on of hands. Very foundational doctrine. Your hands laid on people. There's an impartation, a transfer. It's why Paul said, I, I desire that I would come to you. Otherwise, he'd just say, my letter will take care of this. There, there, there's power in words, but there is something that the Lord has designed uh, to impart. And I, and I think that it's significant that to honor and even to make that declaration that you heard brother, even Brother Nick say, he said, Brother Shambach laid his hands on me. Uh, he, he said, what did he say? Uh, Reinhardt Bonnke. What, and here's the deal, that he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives the prophet's reward. In other words, how you acknowledge or how, what you see, see them as, that's what you receive from. So that, that you see that how important it is that there's a, just a transfer of, 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 of deposits. That's just the, according to the word. Elijah and Elisha, proximity matters. If you're there, he caught his clue. Double portion. So thank you, Lord. We just received this morning. We received the, just your impartation for everything you've called families to do in this time of families to do. Called together for your glory. For such a time as this, you've placed us here, not by accident. Born, breathed in every spirit, every person here, uh, according to your design, Father. And so thank you for just the equipping, but even today, even just the illumination, uh, uh, the blueprints, the layouts, the fittings of each person here for your glory in the name of Jesus. We just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. And uh, have a great Sunday.